Hello, and welcome to another episode of D-Dubs Plays. Good news is the uh, new microphone is has arrived and uh, I'm currently using it, so hopefully the sound quality in this episode is going to be significantly better than uh, the previous two episodes. Uh, really looking forward to hearing the results of that. Um, but let's get into it. Let's have a quick look at what we did last time. Um, we built our first interchange which uh, is looking really nice uh, quite a basic interchange but I think it looks really good uh, we also extended some of the uh, suburban area just over here and we did some landscaping on the beach just here so um, the plans for this episode um, we're going to finish terra terraforming the beach here um, just leveling it off um, and just up here we're going to add a nice little suburb uh, nicely decorated suburb we're going to be able to put in lots of trees and uh, pretty little things to make it look nice um, and then depending how far we get and how much time we've got we might start working on some of the road infra infrastructure so um, let's get into it I'm going to start terraforming the beach here and um, whilst I'm doing that uh, let's just find the tool um, yeah whilst I'm doing that uh, we'll have a little chat about where we are in terms of a, a creator and the progress we're making uh, with our content so I mentioned previously that I wanted the commentary to flow a bit better I was uh, I'd noticed that that was one of the things that was letting me down um, and the audio quality needed to improve and I think both of those have moved in the right direction so I'm um, quite happy with that um, I did notice in the last episode that my camera work was um, quite quite jolty and uh, I was twitching around a lot moving around a lot um, especially when I was just sort of talking about what I was planning to do and that sort of thing so um, I think my next focus is on trying to get the camera work to be a bit smoother and uh, looking a bit more professional. Um, I've also been working on some production quality side of things, so um, I don't know if it'll be ready in time for this episode, but I'm working on a new logo that's gonna be on the screen um, using some 3D modeling software. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see if that comes up on this episode or not. I mean, I might have already finished it, and it might already be in the corner of the screen right now. I don't, I don't actually know yet. But, um, but yeah, if it is, I hope you like it. I hope it looks as good as I'm uh, envisioning it. Um, so yeah, the uh, the point is, we're making some progress. I'm uh, I'm constantly learning, and I'm um, looking for things to improve on the episodes, and um, really trying to move the quality of my content forward, get it up to. Uh, get up to that next level and uh, again I want to appeal for feedback um, because any any feedback that I can get from my audience is really going to help me to make sure I'm moving in the right direction and uh, improving the content in the right way so please 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 get into the comment section let me know what you think what I can improve what I've done well and uh, yeah keep giving me that feedback and uh, give me the direction that I need to uh, improve now there were a couple of things in the last episode that i realized watching it back that i didn't explain well at all um so i'm just going to cover those quickly now um, just because i think it's it's a good habit to get into to explain things properly and um yeah so uh the first thing was um when i was building the interchange here i was talking about a little bit of road jank around the corners here and then a similar thing happened when i was building the road here so i'm just going to cut quickly to that footage and explain um, what was actually going on here okay so what's happening here is that the node at the end of the straight piece of road um, where the curved piece of road begins won't move um, the game treats it like it's a corner so it can't move the node without moving the point where the straight road meets the curved road um, and because of that it won't let me place a node that overlaps the node that can't be moved 
So the way to deal with that situation when you're working with a piece of road that is next to where a straight piece joins a curve um, is just to delete the curve, move the straight road out a bit. As soon as you've got a straight road, then um, if you try to place a node overlapping, it will just move the node along the road so that you can put it where you want to put it. Once you've got the node in, you can then delete the excess straight, straight road and put the curve back in and you'll be fine. So I thought um, it was worth just explaining quickly what's going on there because it's a situation that you're likely to encounter quite often and if you understand what's going on then it's uh, much easier to know how to deal with it and uh, get it dealt with quickly. Okay, here's a little setup that I've uh, put together just to illustrate the other thing that I haven't really explained which is road hierarchy. Um, I've skipped over it a couple of times but I haven't really gone into any detail and it's worth explaining it properly so at its core it's exactly what it sounds like it's a hierarchy of roads at the top you've got your highways which are the fast high capacity roads with very few junctions next on the list is arterials so arterials are still quite quick and quite high capacity they'll have more junctions than a highway but fewer than other roads and a key point is that the arterials are the only roads that should connect to the highway. Below the arterials we have collector roads. So these are going to be a bit slower and a bit lower capacity. And they're going to have a few more junctions. And these are going to be the roads that connect your local road network to your arterials. And of course local roads are at the bottom. Local roads will be the slowest roads with the lowest capacity and you'll have many junctions on a local road network and the number of junctions is quite important because junctions slow traffic down so the more junctions you have on a road the more they will impede the flow of traffic and road hierarchy is more than just a way of categorizing roads it's a way of thinking about how to lay out your road network so let's have a little look at an example of how road hierarchy might work so here you can see we have our highways at the top uh, just a couple of junctions with a good space between them they're not going to impede the traffic flow very much at all onto the highways um, lead the arterial roads and you can see we've got more junctions on the arterial which is the ring around the outside but um, again they're well spaced they're not really going to impede the flow of traffic too much then we have our collector road few more junctions on that so that might slow the traffic down a little bit more but again it should be reasonably free flowing and then that leads into the local road network where we've got junctions all over the place but uh, one thing you might notice from this setup is that traffic can't really take a shortcut through the local road network so if traffic wants to come from over here say to over here it has to use either the collector the arterial so we're really forcing our traffic to use the more free-flowing roads that we want it to use rather than clogging up our local road network anyway now that we've covered road hierarchy let's jump into a time-lapse and build that suburb
Welcome back. I uh, hope you enjoyed the time lapse music there. That was a track called Clear Skies by Hartsman. Now you may notice that there's a bit more on the screen here than you saw in that time lapse. Unfortunately, I did do a recording session between that time lapse and now, but something went wrong and I had to scrap all of the footage. So um, I'm going to talk you through what I did between then and now. Uh, filled out the uh, rest of the residential zone in, as you can see. We uh, set the district to uh, self-sufficient buildings, which is part of the Green Cities DLC, and we got in the power and the water. Um, you'll also notice there's lots of footpaths along here as well, which we uh, put in. I left a nice bit of space um, along here because I've got an idea about uh, putting some small, uh, higher density buildings in here, and I've got an idea of which asset I'm looking for. Um, but yeah, I think that could look quite nice along the cliff top. Um, in this area we've got the uh, primary school and uh, junior school and we've got some of the service buildings, uh, police station, fire station, post office uh, and medical clinic. Uh, put in a, put in a, I put in a little park here, a couple of footbridges um, over the highway here I think I used the amusement park bridge on this side and then on this side I used the zoo path. The zoo one has this nice little um, greenery hanging from it which is quite pretty. Um, I had to put in a extra power station just over here and I also put in a cemetery. Now the cemetery was necessary because the other thing that happened during that lost footage was that we hit our next milestone. Um, so we'll go back and have a quick look at that. Uh, we got airport areas unlocked. We're not going to worry too much about that yet because I don't know where I'm going to put the airport yet. Uh, we got our first public transport options so we'll definitely be looking at putting some of those in in the next episode. Uh, we've got ore industry specialization, a few new policies new roads so we'll be uh, upgrading some of the road network in the next episode as well and a few new buildings as well a cemetery obviously which I've already put in um, I think a lot of these are public transport related and natural disasters related um, yeah there's a small warehouse and fish factory. We'll uh, we'll put in some fishing industry a little bit later down the line as well. But I'll go into more detail with some of the buildings when I start placing them and um, explain them as uh, as and when they're needed. Uh, but now it's time to get into looking at some of the decorating. Uh, this is the bit that I've been looking forward to. I do enjoy decorating an area. So let's have a look at some of the things that we can use to uh, decorate with. Um, before we go into the landscaping, uh, it's worth mentioning that in the leisure tab there are the props, which uh, there's lots of different things in there that you can use for de decorations. Um, you've also got props in the park life, um, different park areas. Um, they all have props in them as well. Um, but the main thing that we're going to be using is going to be things like trees, fences, paths, rocks. Um, always worth starting with the largest items that you want to put in. I don't think we've got space in this area for one of the big rocks. That's a little bit too narrow. But we could put in uh, a few of these smaller ones. Now a lot of things on console don't overlap very well but rocks are one of the things that you can actually get a bit of an overlap with which is uh, quite nice so you can build up some uh, kind of custom large rocks and then we've got the uh, the little rocks as well which are good for decorating around the edges. And. Uh, you can rotate these around as well so that they don't look too sameish as you're placing them and uh, this I, I think these make quite a nice feature especially in combination with some of the ground cover stuff that came with the content creator um, trees 
so just dot a few of these around the edges um, try and find places where they'll actually sit <laughs> uh, see the, the overlapping isn't perfect but you can overlap sometimes so yeah I like to just put a little bit of the uh, long grass around the edges uh, and then another uh, useful tip when you're trying to get that position right is um, just nudging the camera up and down sometimes gives you a smaller movement than moving the camera with the uh, left stick so uh, for that fine tuning of movement that's a useful thing to bear in mind and then we'll swap it out we'll put some of these ones in just to vary it up a little bit and put a nice little patch of these in Stick a couple of the uh, bushes in as well. There is a spot there that it will go. There it is. Put one over here as well. Uh, just about there. And one just about there, I think. And then these are good for just adding a little splash of colour in there as well. It's, uh, it's good to break it up a little bit with a little bit of splash with a little my, my tripping over my tongue there um, with little splashes of color here and there um, and yeah as you can see we've got a nice little uh, rock feature there and the uh, ground cover stuff just uh, adds a little something something to it um, but we'll move into trees now um, start with the larger trees I love this uh, oak it's uh, probably one of my favorite trees I use it everywhere um, but we'll just dot a few of these around um, and yeah don't don't go overboard with the larger ones just a few here and there and then get some of the smaller ones around to fill it out um, and there are different ways that you can do your green belts as well um, sometimes I'll just put little clumps of trees like this another little clump here another little clump here sometimes I'll just kind of fill out the whole area with trees but uh, there are a couple of things to bear in mind as you're doing it so um, one of the things is color palette now a lot of the trees in the content creator pack as much as I like them are quite similar shades so I will splash in a couple of these ones um, here and there as well just to give it a bit of variety in the color palette um, stop it looking too bland but yeah as you can see just these um, slightly different shades of green just splashed here and there just help to break it up a little bit and then it's always good to just add a little splash of color as well so uh, this one here is a, a nice option for just adding a little touch of color every now and again and uh, yeah before you know it you'll have a really nice green belt area filled out and um, I think it's worth doing these as you go along as well because um, if you leave them until like if, if I left like if I did this whole tile and I didn't fill out any of the green belts at all then I'd end up having a lot of green space to try and come back and fill so if you kind of do it as you go along it's going to seem like a much less daunting task for you and um, yeah I I find it quite an enjoyable task as well so so there's that but yeah I'm going to uh, gonna work on some of this so I'll put a cut in here and I'll bring you back when I've done a bit more now this is looking much prettier let me just take you through what I've done off camera we started off over here whilst I was talking you through how I uh, decorate areas and you can see I have filled it out all the way along the edge here um, keep into that uh, adding of splashes of color and changing up the color palette slightly so that it uh, breaks up the monotony of it um, over at this end we've um, added lots of rocks and uh, the, the larger rock assets just to make this uh, outcropping look a bit more interesting um, and then inside the residential district we've put some uh, little bits in the green spaces here 
um, using a variety of uh, ground cover, larger trees, just uh, giving it a bit of variety, changing it up a bit. We've also um, put lamp posts in along the paths and some benches occasionally. Uh, here we've added a rock and some more ground cover and you can see the benches just there. Uh, ice cream van on the corner there. We've made this nice little custom um, plaza area where we've got a couple of stools and some places to sit, a couple of nice flower beds next to it using some of the props. Uh, some of those were from the park life and some of them were the base game props. Uh, added a few trees, um, sticking to the tree palette from the uh, playground just to make it look like it's all part of the same thing. Around the school we've added a ring of trees around a bit of green space for the kids to play and then we've added this custom park here next to the um, primary school uh, for the kids to have a little play, a couple of benches there, sand pit. Um, yeah I think that looks really nice. Um, but yeah that's uh, that's an idea of what you can do with uh, decorating the areas. Uh, I've left all of these uh, green spaces here because as I mentioned earlier I've got an idea about buildings that I'm going to put in there and then any uh, gaps between the buildings will fill out once the buildings are in there. Um, I also put in a couple of commercial buildings here um, that's using the local and organic produce district policy which again came from the green cities I am actually going to delete that one and let it grow back because I don't like two buildings exactly the same sitting next to each other um, you want a bit of a variety um, so we'll just wait and see what grows back there um, let's maybe speed the game up a bit and have a look at what we get it's going to be a nice different building yeah it looks like it yeah we got a nice little market stall type building there that, that looks good let's keep that okay so let's talk about what we're going to do in the next episode uh, we're going to work on upgrading some of these roads around here this um, I, I, I did upgrade the highway uh, because I realized that the highways are wider road and um, I wanted a clearer idea of where the edge was going to be. I also put some of this fencing, this is the zoo fence next to the highway. Um, I got this tip from Overcharged Eggs Channel but I know he credited somebody else for it and I can't for the life of me remember who he credited for it so not sure whose uh, idea this came up, uh, who, who came up with this idea but um, yeah the zoo fence makes a really nice highway barrier. Um, so yeah we'll be putting some more of that in uh, in the next episode um, but yeah we need I didn't upgrade in any of these roads here so we need to put um, highway slip roads in there and uh, make those faster roads we'll probably upgrade uh, some of the roads around here and start reworking this district but our main focus is going to be on laying out some ore industry up in this area so uh, yeah that's the plan for the ne next episode and uh, I look forward to seeing you then